Yeah, this concept is known as overloading. That is, the name remains same, but the number of parameters which you pass on they differ. Okay, the names they remain same, but the number of parameters which you pass on into the constructor, right? They differ. And overloading is a, a very important thing, right? If you write over here system dot out dot println inside overloaded constructor, fine. Now, when from my test laptop dot Java, I create an object. I write over here laptop l3 equals to new laptop. You can pass over the model number and your serial number on the fly. That is, you can pass over, you can create the object as well as initialize all the properties by passing over these two things inside the constructor. Okay, and inside the constructor, all I need to write is that this model number is equal to m, which is passed over in this constructor, and the serial number is equal to s. Okay, the serial number is a. So whenever I pass create the object, now the objects would be created on the fly and their, their values would also be initialized. Okay, all the properties of the object would also be initialized. I won't have to write separate lines to initialize every object. Okay, so what I told you was there are constructors. Constructors, they help you to uh, initialize the objects. Okay, you can overload the constructors. Maybe I can make one more overloaded constructor over here if I want. I can write over here public laptop, which will just accept the model number. It will not accept the serial number, right? You will have to write model equals to m in it. This constructor initializes only half the object. Okay, if you Okay. If you yeah. if you go out here in your test laptop, you can create the another object of the laptop class, but that object would only be initialized to Like to, to only a half, half a level, right? So similarly, let's come back to the Firefox profiling concept, okay, and see how we can use Firefox profiling out here, okay? Now in this, inside Selenium API, there is a class known as profile INI. Okay, this is the internal class. I am going to create the object of this class. You import this class. Now this profile INI class, it accepts, it is basically, it represents all the Firefox profiles of your machine. In your machine, if I, if I, am, if I have created 10, 15 Firefox profiles, right now only two, right? But if I create more, then all the profiles which are there in my machine, it represents those profiles. If I create the object of this class, then what happens is that, all those profiles are loaded in this object automatically behind the scenes. Selenium does this. Profiles INI class does this. This is an internal class inside API just like Firefox. And you need to write all profiles dot, there's a function called get profile. Get the profile called 
selenium right so this is the profile right which i created selenium s is small right s is small make sure you give s as smaller whatever name you are giving make sure that it's case and still you can give any name and you give the right one okay and this function returns you an object of an internal class known as firefox profile okay so this class will return you an, an another object of an internal class called firefox profile i'll name it my profile equals to this so i this line it represents all the profiles on your machine it loads all profiles and this class out here this function over here returns you the selenium profile from all the profiles and if you look at firefox profile class in the documentation hold on i will go to i'll open a google and i write the name in download and i go to the java docs out here and if you look at the class firefox driver this class then this class has got constructors you look at constructor summary these are all the overloaded constructors we have for firefox driver this is the one which we just used okay we normally use now there is another firefox driver constructor which accepts the profile of firefox which you want to open the last one okay so out here i have the profile object from firefox profile so you just need to pass that profile inside the constructor that's it so when you run this now a file selenium firefox profile from your local machine will be opening up you see that this profile opens up and you have got firebug in it right this is important because many times you need to investigate on the page on which the testing is happening using selenium right so that's why and many times using if you have to use proxy and all this profiling comes up into the picture if you have to handle certificate errors if you need to test https website secure website then you need to have this profiling concept with you i'll talk about it i'll talk about it in coming time fine now this is about firefox right i i only talked about firefox right how to execute this code on firefox how to get the export now what if i want to execute the code on i or chrome will this code work the co the answer is yes because if the page source is remaining same it is not dependent on the browser you just need to change the browser name over here and run and in most of the cases the website it opens in the same way in all the browsers and the page source remains same if the page source is remaining same the element properties in the xpath will remain same right okay so you can do that you can make the code on firefox get the xpath on firefox and make it run on chrome and i but in case suppose your website is not working in firefox if your website is actually not supported in firefox how do you get the xpath in chrome suppose i open a chrome and on chrome i go to the site in.redirect.com okay now in chrome i told you right you you can right click on the element and go to inspect element this is the particular element this one okay if you right click on it you will get the option copy export 
So you can get the X path from Chrome as well by first moving over to the element, for example, FDI in retail. I right click on it, inspect element, and if you right click on it and you can copy the X path like this. Okay, you can copy the X path and if you look at the X path, you will get an X path like this. Instead of double quotes, the only thing is you need to put single quotes. That's it. This is how you do it in Chrome. Fine. Now, what about in I? In I, you have to go to the page source and calculate it manually. There is no tool in I which will tell you the X path. Okay. In Chrome, you can get, in Mozilla, you can get, but in I, you will not get any tool which gives you the X path. But generally, you can get it in Mozilla, or you can find out the X path in Chrome and try to use the X path in I. Right? So that's how you use it. That's what the concept of Firefox profiling is. That's what constructors are. So we saw all these things today, right? And uh, I'll stop here because the next topic which I'm going to take, uh, how to manage test cases and like if I have to go to a page, validate something, do the validations and all, make the reports and all using a test engine or JUX framework, I want to tell you about that. I, I don't have enough time to start that topic now because that requires a lot of time. So we'll meet again tomorrow is Saturday in India, Friday in US. Tomorrow also I am keeping the class because in between I kept one day off. So tomorrow is the last trial class, right? In case you have made up your mind to join the training, you can go to my site qtpselenium.com and there is a contact trainer section out here. There is a contact trainer section. You can send me a message. Okay, that I am interested and just send your email ID. I'll get back to you. Email ID, contact number, and other. Okay, right.